We're now joined by Dr. Marie Mullaney, who is a professor of history and specialist in women's history at Caldwell University. Good to see you, Professor. Oh, it's great to see you too, Steve. So let, let's do this. You're not a fan of the way women's history is taught right now and the way we talk about it, because? Well, it depends on where it is being taught. If you're talking <laughs> about the traditional Women's History Month that's celebrated in the public schools, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, Certainly on the college level, I know it is taught much, much, much differently. So we're not talking about the college level. We're talking about, you know, Every March, uh, we trot out these women and we do these little biographies and the, the students probably hear about the same women over and over and over again until they get sick of hearing about the same women over and over again. So it's a problem, you know, we're glad and certainly happy that there is some learning taking place, but there's so much more to the history of women than that kind of biographical approach. And, and from your view, and by the way, let me disclose that I've done some teaching and continue to teach at the doctoral level at Caldwell University, a terrific place. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, what should we be focusing on, not just national leaders who happen to be women, but also in New Jersey? Please share, doctor. Well, what we should be focusing on in all of our classes is an inclusive approach to history. And that is what, I don't even know how I got that idea 45 years ago when I decided to go into this profession. But even when I was in college, I realized that history is stories of everyone. It's not just white men. It's not just white politicized women. In every one of our classes, we need to be inclusive and tell all different sorts of stories. So I teach about African-American history in every one of my American uh, history courses. And I teach about women, I think, in every single course that I teach. So I'm teaching Western civilization now. I teach about women wherever it is possible, whether it's talking about the, the Greek ideas about women or why women were excluded from politics for so many years. I mean, there just has to be a natural fit. And I also teach history of New Jersey. I mean, I'm constantly talking about women when and when and where it is appropriate. So I'm not saying you make these things up just to be condescending, not, not at all. But um, I've been teaching a very long time and I understand that what I am suggesting might not be possible for somebody right out of graduate school who's starting to teach, you know? But this, the more you learn about your discipline, you know uh, how to interweave these stories to get your students interested, whether it's women's history or African-American history, or right now I'm teaching a brand new course in the history of Hispanics in America. And it is just great. And yesterday I talked about Dolores Huerta, who is not as well known as Cesar Chavez. So that's right. You know, so so you do it everywhere you can. Um, I teach courses on the history of the Catholic Church and wherever possible, I integrate the stories of Catholic women, Catholic saints, Catholic sisters. Um, that's just the way I approach history. And, and, there are, uh, and excuse me, there are some religious women who don't get enough attention. Most religious women don't get any attention whatsoever. Um, and that's really unfortunate. I teach the history of American women. And one of the textbooks that I use is about 600 pages long. So it covers the whole gamut of women in America. I think there are two pages that talk about Catholic religious sisters, which is appalling, absolutely appalling. And why that is the case, we can discuss. But Catholic religious women have done so much. So I'm sh whenever I teach the Civil War, I make sure to talk about um, sisters, the women who were on the battlefield and served as nurses at that time. And when you talk about American holidays and why we have certain American holidays, I mean, the role that women, women played in that, whether it's Thanksgiving or Mother's Day or Memorial Day, believe it or not, M Memorial Day was started by women in the American South. What year? Oh, my goodness. It was shortly after the Civil War, shortly after the Civil War. And it was called Decoration Day for decades. And women drove that. Excuse me? Women pushed that. Women led women that. pushed that. Women pushed that because they had lost so much. I mean, certainly North and South, but Southern women especially 
especially lost so much of their lives. They lost their farms. They lost their plantations. They lost their status. They lost their workforce. Um, and, and it was a way of remembering. So I think we are wrong to focus on women in history from a political point of view and only a political point of view, that there's so many other women activists who serve, who come out, come to their contributions and their activism from this ethos of serving, which is what women traditionally have been taught to do. So you can conclude that, but it is greatly responsible for their contributions over the centuries. Uh, professor, by the way, beyond Susan B. Anthony, who matters so much in our history, as uh, Dr. Mullaney has said, so many other women. A uh, compelling, important conversation, Dr. Marie Mullaney. I want to thank you. We, we wish you all the best. You just taught us a lot. Thank you, Professor. It was a lot. Pleasure to be here. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for watching. You know more about women's history right now because of Dr. Mullaney. We'll catch you next time. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, PNC, Grow Up Great, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Summit Health, United Airlines, the New Jersey Education Association, NJM Insurance Group, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Family Magazine and by bestofnj.com. I'm Tim Sullivan, CEO of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Since joining the NJEDA, I've been struck by the incredible assets and resources that New Jersey has to offer. The NJEDA is working every day to grow New Jersey's economy in a way that maximizes the values of those assets to benefit every single New Jersey resident. This includes more support for small businesses and a focus on reclaiming New Jersey's position as a leader in the innovation economy. Visit NJEDA.com to learn more about how NJEDA is building a stronger and fairer New Jersey economy.